Let's imagine someone goes out on a 20 minute training run for argument's sake. And we imagine that here's the start of their run. That's gonna be the start of their run. And 20 minutes later, this is gonna be the end of their run. So that's what we're sort of illustrating here. We've got some period before, we've got the run itself, and then we've got a period after the run. So what could we expect this graph to look like if we're looking at heart rate in, in beats per minute, and of course the time I just mentioned across the bottom. So first things first, we're gonna illustrate a resting heart rate. So I'm gonna say this person's resting heart rate, I'm just sketching of course, is here. So let's be clear, what I've got, if I just drag down slightly, what I've got here, what I've got here in blue, I'll sort of put it in blue here for you, this blue color, this is rest. And we're gonna argue that rest for most people is gonna be 60 to 80 BPM, all right? Now I haven't put, I haven't actually put values on the y-axis here, but let's imagine that that is 70 beats per minute for argument's sake, that's what we find there. Now, what we're gonna have before the exercise starts is that this individual is gonna experience this kind of red profile here. Now that red profile there, if I just sort of put this over here as a bit of a key, that red profile there is what we call an anticipatory rise anticipatory rise. So before we start doing any, it's not because we've started warming up here, before we've started doing any kind of exercise, our heart rate has risen. So why would that be? So we could annotate here that why this is actually happening is that we are getting a release release of adrenaline. So from the adrenal gland, adrenaline is being released. It's effectively part of our fight or flight mechanism, of course. And that release of adrenaline, that is gonna stimulate that is gonna stimulate, or it stimulates the SA node, okay? The SA node be the pacemaker of the heart, and that is gonna cause an increase in heart rate, even though no additional intensity has taken place. And by the way, we call this hormonal control. Hormonal control, because of course there are other ways to control heart rate, but this one is called hormonal control. So before we've started exercising then, we've got this increase in heart rate. Once we start doing our 20 minute, uh, did I say 20 minute training run? I think I did. What might it look like? Well, let me sort of choose green here. We would have a continued increase in heart rate. And because it's like a training run, we then have it sort of leveling off here. So if I now put this over here, that little block there, what we're talking about here is we describe that as a rapid, a rapid increase. And what's happening in this period of time is that our aerobic systems, our cardiovascular, our respiratory systems, our metabolic system, they're trying to get more oxygen to the working muscle through various mechanisms, by the way, including redistribution, including an increase in heart rate, as we're seeing here, all kinds of ways. But what we're seeing here is that it's not immediate. When we start running, which is here, our heart rate doesn't jump to, let's say that's 140 beats per minute for argument's sake. It doesn't jump there, it gradually gets there. Then what do we experience? We experience this period of time where we get, I'll just put there's a pink here. This is what we describe as steady state exercise. And what's happening here is that the demand for oxygen is being met by a supply of oxygen. That's why there's no increase or decrease here. We've got that steady state movement happening that way. And to finish this off, when we get to the end of exercise, we're gonna have this period. Now this period here, this purple period, we would call this, I mean, there's actually a couple of things, uh, a couple of ways that we can describe this, but that's actually what I'm gonna to refer to as a steep decline. Okay, so heart rate starts to fall rapidly at the end of exercise. And then what it's gonna do is, what, what color should I choose this one? It's going to level off back to resting levels. So this is what we call leveling off, leveling off. And what's happening here is effectively, the heart rate, and it's ultimately the oxygen that we kind of needed available to us here, it's now being repaid through the work that's being done post-exercise. In other words, this work here wasn't able to be done aerobically, it had to be done anaerobically. So of course, we therefore need to pay that back, and that's what this episode here, post-exercise, the recovery period. Now we're gonna go into far more detail about that recovery, but I wanna come back to the main point of this particular tutorial. Anticipatory rise, it happens before the onset of exercise, not because we're warming up, for example. It is the release of adrenaline from the adrenal gland. It directly stimulates the sinoatrial node, which of course, as you probably know by now, maybe you don't, but as you probably know by now, which then stimulates atrial systole, has a knock-on effect onto the AV node, which stimulates ventricular systole subsequently, which in turn increase heart rate, and we call this hormonal control. Just remember those key factors such as resting heart rate range, anticipatory rise, and the general profile of this curve. This, of course, would be a submax example. 
you know, we're looking at training jog a run here. We're not working maximally. Anyway, hope that's useful for you. Thank you.